So thank you all for showing up. I don't know who else is on the East Coast for this uh, storm of the century, they're calling it. We're hoping it doesn't amount to that. Yeah, I know, Robin, as you're right down the road. <laughs> so far, so good, right, Robin? <laughs> Just have to wait and see what happens. All right. Um, does anyone have a question they'd like to pose about G plus using G plus or um, what they might be doing that they could help themselves with? Any questions per se? If not, uh, I will start with a little screen share then, and we'll go from there. Let me find screen share. Okay. I go to my desktop. All right, what I'm talking about with uh, setting up your circles so your community is easy to find, so the people are easy to find, is if you go to your home page, which really is the home page is what streams for you, and at the top of the page, you're going to see a bar, and it says all, which is everyone that is in your circles, and then next to that, you'll have your circles. Now, the first one, which is what I use the most, is act, my active food blogger circle. And those are ones that are posting on a regular basis, you know, more than twice a month, or you know, not coming in, dropping 12 posts, and then coming back next month and dropping 12 posts. Um, I'm not looking for those right now. I have them. I, I want to keep them, but I have them in a separate folder, just food bloggers. And as they become active, I move them over. But what you want to do is if you do that, and you can break this down even more uh, so, so that if you were a vegan or a vegetarian or you wanted to separate them or you have a group of 12 friends or 20 friends that you really want to keep close tabs on, you can set up a separate circle. And what I do is I advise you doing that before things get a little too crazy. You want to set up your circles so they're easy to understand, they're easy to use. Now with this, I have my active food bloggers. So all I do, and if you hit J, the letter J takes you down to a post. So I can very easily see who's posting. I can give them some plus one loves, move on. So this makes it easy to move around. Michael's got some nice wines there. And keep track. Now, you know, if I find something, here you are, Stacy. Uh, somebody just is feeding back there. So if you just joined, if you can mute yourself until you have a question, I'd appreciate it. And that keeps me from getting feedback. Um, you come in here if you want to leave a comment. You know, this is, the, this is just like, I don't know who was on Food Buzz with me. But basically, this is just like Food Buzz. You can plus one, which is, was the buzz. You can leave a comment for them. You can share. Now this is where you you know you want to get into sharing. Like if you share a circle, now right now you'll see it it's coming up with just the groups that I invited to this. All right, so you'd come in here and you don't ever really want to share to circles unless you're having something very specific like this hangout, or if there's a notice say you know you had a a problem and you wanted to make all your friends aware that you're not going to be blogging for a little while, then it's okay to send them a notification. Or if you're in a contest and you need their help, you want to share something, then it's okay. But for the most part, you really don't want to share if you, know, if you don't have to. I just did something screwy here. Let me come back to this again. Dennis, you meant you, meant you, want, you don't want to share to a circle. You want to share to a circle. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, you don't want to share. Uh, you want to share publicly, not to circles. Right. Okay. When you share to circles, what happens is a notification gets sent out, and so you know a lot of people with all the notifications they're getting are considering that more like spam or an intrusion. So we don't want to intrude on each other's lives or, or give us too much to read, especially, very especially, you don't want to click the send an email button. Because then you know it's just it becomes overwhelming, and you don't know how many emails I get. How do I turn this off? And we'll we'll get to that later too. Dennis. So yes. I'm sorry. What kind of notification gets sent out? Uh, if it's this not an red, email notification, what is it? See this little red box up here with the uh -huh. two? That's what you get. That's your notification. Oh, okay. I don't. I personally, I not, don't consider those a new set. No, they're but. not intrusions, but some people do. Okay. I, I, okay. I don't consider them intrusions either. Okay. <laughs> But this is what happened, you know, so you, you all know what it looks like. So these are your notifications. So like I said, it's not a big deal as long as you're not sending out emails. Now, but here's the problem. Sometimes even though you're not sending out the email, people don't have their settings set right and they're getting an email. 
because you sent a notification. So you're not doing anything wrong, but they're still getting one. We'll get to that. So again, when you share, and the easiest way to do it is when you come here, add names, you click on that, and then your list comes down. Public, your circles, extended circles would be all the people that are following the people you follow. And then if you wanted to send something out just specific to a group and share it and not share it with anyone else, like today's group just went out to my active food bloggers and to the Google people in case if one of those wanted to bounce on and talk to us. You know, they're always good to have on a Hangout. So you would just put it in there. Now the good thing about this too is when you share it public, you're also giving me the capabilities of sharing it public. If you share it limited, it's going to tell me that, and the best I can do is my extended circles. Okay, So that's a reason to share it public. Now what happens when you share it public is it will go into the mainstream and it'll give peop more people an opportunity to see it uh, that may not otherwise see it. So that's a good reason to do it. Now, um, where can we move from here? All right, so this is how to use it. Now, you know, I, I have a lot of people that I follow here, and I have photographers. So if I wanted to see what my photographer friends were doing, you know, I can come on and very easily see, you know, what they're doing. And a lot of times you'll get some great tips Oh, good it's Hurricane Sandy pictures. It's always good to see now. <laughs> and, or some really neat, like I like Canon tweets because I have a Canon camera and they tell you all kinds of neat stuff for what's coming out and what to do. Uh, Lotus Carol is just magnificent if you've never seen any of her work. Uh, Eli Locardi does a lot of um, online lessons and he has some YouTube videos that show you how to take, how to use lighting. He's really good. So, I mean, there's a, a whole world out there besides food bloggers. And while I advocate this community in setting up your account, so your active food bloggers or your friends, food blogger friends, or your little niche of food bloggers that you really like to follow, or at your fingertip and you can follow them, it's always good to add more to that. Okay, you know, tech news, so you're you're informed and you know you can always go back to the main screen and get everybody too and I'll sit here and just laugh sometimes because some of this is some of the funniest goofiest stuff every now and that they post and it's it's good entertainment for me I don't really spend much time on Facebook or on uh, Twitter anymore uh, for a couple reasons and, and most importantly is just what is is showing up and then if you haven't seen this on the side screen here this is showing you who is available for a chat. Now, you can also use this just to chat with people real quick. Like if I wanted to talk to Joe, that's my boss from Chef Hangout, I could send him a little chat notice here. And if he's actually on the computer and can see it, he'll respond. He's also got a camera, so I could try and hang out with him real quick. So if they have a camera, that means you could do a quick one-on-one -on -one hangout with him. Uh, this one's on a mobile phone. All right. And the little green dots are showing that they are available. So it doesn't show everybody. It just gives you a snippet. And here, there's a little box if you don't want people to know you're online for various reasons. Like I've actually got a couple stalkers that constantly bombard me with questions and things all the time. So I'm very rarely visible. Uh, it just gets, you can't get any work accomplished, you know, when people are, are doing that all the time to you same person. <laughs> so anyway, I, I keep myself invisible. Um, any questions so far? We're good? Okay, I will move on then. Um, come back to here again. So you're saying when you post a post, only click public and that's it? Yes. Now, you, I'm not telling you what to do. You know, you can do it any way you want to. But what by clicking public, what you're doing is you're eliminating the notifications going out, and you're also sending it to more of the stream. Now, while okay. we want to. Well, I said, well, we want to form a community, and it's very important to follow your fellow food bloggers and to connect with them. All right, these aren't the people that are going to be reading your blog all the time. These aren't the people mm -hmm. that are going to be making your recipes. 
All right, we want, just like the regular people that are on here for fun, uh, we want the tech people who have no idea how to cook, most of them. You know, they just, they, and they were looking for good recipes. Photographers are always looking mm -hmm. for recipes. So what you want to do is you want to interact with them, and I've been able to interact with some pretty good ones along the way because they'll send me, hey, chef, do you have a recipe for you know, and and I'll look for one real quick and uh, to send them because you know this is something they're they're turning to me for for some help in that field, and I want to provide it for them. So and then then you get a following that you never had, and they'll share something right. to their friends, which is a whole new segment now. So you're opening up, you're diversifying, you're giving yourself a whole new area. To, to get readers, to get people coming mm -hmm. to your blog, to get people to reshare your stuff. You know, and it's like one remember the, the hair commercial, one friend told this friend and these two friends told four friends and these four friends told this is what happens. And by getting out of your comfort zone a little and going and looking for people other than just food bloggers, this is where your followers following is going to increase and this is where you're going to pick up you know some more people that are really going to be interesting and fun you know I have some people out there from all over the world that are really fun to talk to okay all right so let me move on and I'm going to go to how to how to use your settings now if you come to the top of the page where your name is and you click on that, and then you click on account, it brings up your account information. Now, you can go right in here, it tell you, it'll give you your, all your information that you can list, uh, your security, you change your password. Two-step verification, I stopped using because every time I wanted to log on, it had to send me a message to my cell phone to put the code in, and I haven't had any issues with that, knock on wood, but I mean, if you wanted to really make it more secure, that would be how you did it. Um, your profile, this shows you what's showing up for you in your Google search when someone's looking for you. Sharing, manage your circles. Uh, if you click on that, that'll bring you to your circles, uh, who your posts are shared with, a little bit of explanation. But most importantly, we come down to settings. All right, and this is all up to you how you want to modify this. This is just how I have it. But, you know, you'll list who can send you notifications because if you leave that open for public, then you'll be getting all kinds of notifications from people that are really are almost like spamming you, and it's irrelevant. So uh, extended circles, I figure the friends of my friends is good enough. Uh, who can comment? I have anyone because you never know then who you're going to pick up. And, and nothing is more frustrating than seeing something you like, and I just did that recently, and tried to leave a comment for something and says, you are not allowed to make comments on this. Well, okay, so that's the last time I'm going to their, their posts, right? Their posts, right. exactly. Yeah. All right, um, you can get push notifications. I don't really want to be notified by phone about anything unless the house is burning down, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, email subscriptions, that's fine. Let them send me what they want. But down here in the post, I mean, this is where you can get overwhelmed. Someone shares a post directly with me. I don't need to know that by email, okay? If uh, someone comments on a post I created, I don't need to know that by email. These are all things I don't feel that I need to know by email, uh, so my e email box isn't getting really cluttered. What I want to know is if someone mentions me, if someone shares a post and they're in a circle. What is this? This is something new. Shares a post and they're in a circle. So, you know, I don't want that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know where that was. Every now and then, Google adds something, and when they add it, they automatically check it for you. Okay. I, someone adds me to a circle. I want to know that so I can see who my new friend is. Uh, someone suggests new people to add to my circles. You know, that's fine. Tags me in a photo. If someone's putting photos of me up there, I want to know about it. So if they tag me or tags one of my photos or if they suggest a profile photo, I think that's a hey, new Dennis. one too. Yeah. Uh, I'm yes. going to add something to what you're talking about here. I think sure. it, Go ahead. what you're describing is very is really good. Um, it's very good for some things, but I have a lot of the email function turned on, and then I have a rule that filters in my email, okay, and directs, okay, and then directs everything that gets sent to me in email from Google Plus to a folder, 
So I, and the reason I do that is not so that I can see it, but so that I have it in my history, because searching is terrible in Google+. All right, and I want right. to have a record of every time I'm interacting with anybody on Google+. I want to have a history of it. So okay, I have everything okay. set to email me, and then my email is set to push it to a place where I don't have to look at them unless I want to. Okay, I'm getting some serious feedback from someone. I don't know if... Uh, hey, Brooks, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning. That's a good idea. Now, how do you set that up, Michael, for a filter? filter. Um, it's, um, goodness, I'm using Gmail, of course. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm using Google Apps for my email, so there's a setting there, and I don't recall the exact steps, but uh, I could prepare something and share it with the group for the next time if you like. Okay, great. Yeah, it's always good to know. A quick summary is if you if you set it up to get notifications, the first one that comes, you can mouse over it, and, or when you go into it, and then you go to um, more. You can just click. You can just select it. Go to go to more, and then say filter messages like these. Okay. And then it'll pu it'll pop up all the options for the filters. So if you want to skip oh, the great. inbox, if you want to star it, if you want to uh, mark it as read. If you want to archive yeah. it, if you want to put it into a folder, whatever you want to do. Is that all with Gmail? Yes. Okay. Or Google Apps, yeah. whichever version you're using. Okay. Very good. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, like no, I no, said, I this is <laughs> it's not something that's etched in stone, but, I mean, it's something that I do just to, to make my life a little easier because uh, I get so many emails. And I want to read the ones that are content that people are actually asking me questions. So. I can respond to them, so I just I cut back on uh, on the different things I'm getting. Okay, um, moving on. Anybody else have any questions about anything? No, we're good so far. So far, so good. I actually right. have a question, Dennis. Yes. So I don't know. I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but um, I have my personal profile and I have a page. Right. And I'm wondering what. Is worth because the other thing is that I use my personal email address for my Google Plus account, and I use mm -hmm. my blog email address for my page account. Right. So, um, which one should I be posting to or interacting with more, or does it matter? Well, I think the way that it's set up, it does matter. Now, Google has some very strict guidelines on their fan pages, uh, and they do it to prevent spam, which is good for us. But for anyone with a fan page, uh, it's bad because it restricts who can follow you, or I mean, who, who you can follow, not who can follow you. It restricts who you can follow. You can only follow other brands. So if you had your blog page and you wanted to follow me, you can't until I follow you. Now, the only way you can get me to notice you is by leaving a comment or a plus wanting on my any, some of my posts and I can say oh look and I'll go back and follow you but without doing that I just can't find you I mean you just can't find a group of people or you can't add a circle like you couldn't add your circle of blogger friends to it to follow them so they'll follow you back so you're being restricted when you have a fan page and your growth is going to be really slow so I usually don't recommend using that again you know people want to have them, that's fine. It's up to you. It's entirely up to you. Uh, the, the other aspect of that is goes into uh, being um, recognized more as a person than just a, a, a blog. And I think right now what we're looking at is more interaction between people. We want people to recognize us as people and follow us as people. Uh, with the Google authorship, using your personal page too. Uh, when you go through the Google authorship, you will also have a, your little picture next to your next to your uh, post. All right, so that's a good thing. Well, to, to clarify slightly is I'm also a health coach and so it's my, my food blog kind of ties into my coaching business and it's all one site. So like mm -hmm. for my page, it has my picture on it because I'm, I'm just me, so. No, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But when someone searches for one of your recipes, mm -hmm. then your picture will come up on Google plus, on on the Google search engine. Right. With, with authorship. So does that happen right away now when someone searches for you? Let me find. I have the foggiest idea. Okay, let me go back to. Let's 
see if I can show you what I mean. All right, let's say we're looking for um, pumpkin, not pumping breast milk, no, pumpkin, <laughs> the strangest things come up, pumpkin <laughs> crunch. I can't spell this morning. Okay, there we go. Dennis? So as that comes up, yes. I would add one other thought to that, too. That it, dep it depends a bit on whether your brand that you're trying to build is something larger than you as a person, but if you're building up a brand that you think you want to transfer to someone else's ownership later in life, mm -hmm. then you really want to invest the energy in making the page be the focus because the ownership of that can change as compared to your personal profile, which of course represents you. That's true. Um, so that, that is something to consider. But I think for the most part, food bloggers would rather cut off one of their arms than transfer uh, their blog over to someone. I'm, I mean, it's going to die with me. Uh, and, unless someone offers me an obscene amount of money when I retire, you know, I would never sell the name. Um, so if you are looking to build a brand, then definitely that's the way, that's to, the way do to do it. it. But it's going to take you It takes a, a lot whole, longer. A whole lot longer, a whole really? lot more energy. Yep. And uh, it's got to be something that you really invest hours a day working on. Uh, right. to, I mean, to get to the same point you could by just using your personal page, it, it, it's just going to take a lot, lot longer. And most of the people that come on Google Plus get frustrated just with their personal pages because they're not getting to where they think they should get faster. So if you have a, a fan page, you're never going to get there because uh, it's just going to take so long. Yeah. But I understand exactly what you're saying. So if you're building something for that reason, then yeah, you know, you just got to hope for the best and just keep really being active. But be what I was talking about about authorship was when I shared, when I did this, now see my picture comes up next to my post. Okay, so when you search for me, like here, she's got authorship, so her picture, Myra's picture comes up. Now this was just another post, and actually it's showing a picture of the cake because I posted on Google Plus a picture of the cake, and then it takes you right to your blog. So that's, that's the good reason to use authorship. All right. Can you describe uh, what that means? I'm not familiar with that term. Google authorship? Right. Um, it's a way of verifying that you own your blog. Okay. So what it does is it verifies it. It's, uh, it takes about two or three weeks for it to go through. You, uh, you get to put the links in. I think there's a, a piece of code you have to put in, uh, in somewhere on your blog site, and it verifies you're the owner of it. Uh, and links you to it, links your personal profile to it. So when someone's searching now and they see all recipes and they see a picture of a person with next to their recipe, m I think most inclination is to go to the person because if you've ever been to all recipes, you know that it's just a hodgepodge. You've got to sift through it to find what you want. So I'm going to interact with a real person. And I get more emails now from people just asking me questions about a recipe that you know that just stumbled upon it some way. Um, I get about 40% of my traffic right now from the search engine, which is really kind of cool uh, compared to what I was getting before I started using Google+. So authorship is like the next step in giving you uh, ownership and connecting you to it. So it, it's a good thing to do. It definitely won't hurt you. Say, Dennis? Uh, yes. May I add that if you use the Blogger platform, it's already built into the uh, to the system. Oh, cool. Okay. That I did not know. All right. So that makes it even easier um, for those of you that are still on Blogger and are using it. So um, what else can we talk about here? Oh, uh, there is a brand, a, a kind of brand identification too in an authorship. I, I just, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, Stacy just posted uh, on the sidebar too. The link for authorship. Thank you. Um, and and you know, anything that makes you more connected to what you're doing is a good thing and will help you in the long run. All right. When I talk about connecting with people uh, through the search engines, you know, that's a good thing too. It's making you more personal. It's making you more part of your uh, of your brand. It's you and it's you're branding yourself. Is what it's going to come down to. And uh, I'm lucky with the name of my blog has me in it, so it was easy to brand. But you're better off, you know, if depending on your goals, you're better off 
putting your personal page, putting your blog name under it in the sidebar works at. Uh, one thing I see a lot of times is people don't add all the links in. You really want to add your links in on your personal profile on G+. If you have a YouTube account, if you have a, um, an account anywhere else, um, put them in. A LinkedIn, just put them in. The more links that you put for yourself, the better off you are. There's more things that are going to show up when the search engine does troll for you. Okay, that was my question. Does that, does that affect the search engines then? I believe so. I mean, I was talking to some people from Google about it, and I, I'm pretty sure I remember them saying that it's just another way to find you. So, you know, it's going to show up. Because it, it runs over everything, and your profile is part of you. Uh, they mentioned, we, we, I attended a, a tech munch on Saturday, and one of the things they mentioned was, I forget who it was that said it was, please put a way to contact you in your profile. If it's not on your blog, you know, on especially on your G Plus account, put your email in. If you don't want to put a, a personal email, you know, create a Gmail account then. But put an email in where people can contact you because a lot, I think it might have been one of the brand, uh, the publicists, not the publicists, the uh, PR people that mentioned that. They'll want to contact people sometimes and there's no way to find them. And I've done that you know, tell people I, you know, I saw one of their pictures out on some site that someone else had stolen, and I can't find an email address, or I can't find any way to contact them. So, you know, that's a little off subject, but you know, you should also have that on your uh, G Plus account. The more personalized and the more information you put on your profile, the more of a complete person you are, and the more people are tend to follow you. Like if someone shows up with a blue head and nothing in their profile, I'm not going to follow them. If they show up with a picture or nothing in the profile, I'm not going to follow them. You know, so it's just you're not sharing anything. There's no posts. You know, I'm not going to follow them. You have to really put more in there. Okay, Michael, thank you. I'll see you later. Uh, Dennis. Thanks for coming. Yes. Uh, another thing that authorship does is it moves you up in the search rankings. There you go. I watch my posts uh, move higher. Um, so that's helpful. And it didn't take me two weeks. It took me about 15 minutes. Great. So. Well, yeah, they tell me three weeks. I think when I did it originally, it took a little while. But so if they're moving faster now, that's even better news. Well, um, it was it was extremely simple. Of course, I'm also a, uh, do Google Ads, and that may have made it easier. But anyway. It looks. I just did it, and it looks like if you have a if you have an email address with your domain in it, it's much faster because I'm already verified. It, I mean, it's not coming up in search yet, but mm -hmm. I verified it already like five minutes ago. Very good. So. Good. So I mean, that's going to help you in the long run. I mean, anything that gets you more uh, that you're real is going to get you more more time. And, and and again, it attracts people. People see a picture, they recognize a person. They connect with people. We connect with people. We don't connect with things. You know, we want to connect with people. So that's something to remember. You know, to sell yourself <laughs> as a part of the whole deal. <laughs> you having fun there, Trisha? <laughs> Zoom in and now. Uh, okay. So let's. Anybody have any questions on anything else? We'll move on a little, or let's see what I had in my notes here. Uh, we talked about circles, home page. Uh, commenting and sharing, posting to the public. Oh, uh, images, posting images. Okay, Google Plus, and this came from the mouth of Google, uh, is a food-driven community. It really started with photographers uh, when there weren't a lot of foodies on there, and it's a, they've got some magnificent photographers on there, and they share their pictures. Uh, there had been a question, a concern, that somewhere in the terms of service it was misinterpreted that Google would own the rights to your photographs if you put them on Google Plus, and that was disputed as not being true. So you don't have to worry about that. Says that you own your photograph; it's yours. Uh, if you put it up, there's no issues with it not being yours. What they said they were using it for is they they claim the right <coughs> to use it, like I think, in a thumbnail for your post or for you know use uh, promoting basically you. Uh, not for anything, or in the Google Images search when you click on those pictures and it takes you to your, your site anyway, so it's not a bad thing. Uh, but that being said, 
and they mentioned the same thing was when you post, don't post a link. Okay, you want to post your image. You post the image because the image has a lot more impact. So post your image with a link to that to your blog under it. You know, write a little, a couple sentences about what it is, or you know, high plusers. Uh, this is this cake I made. It's just wonderful. Or this was the best chicken I ever had. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, say something nice. Uh, put your link there. You know, I always uh, now I add follow the link below for the recipe because in the comments it's can I have the recipe? Can I have the recipe? Can I have the recipe? Sure you can. Follow the link to the recipe. All right. So I I actually write that in there now. Yes, Robin. Um, sometimes when I go to link to someone else's website, the photo that's in the blog post isn't an option. Some the ad photos or photos that are always on the website, you know, permanent ones, mm -hmm. show up. But when I click the, you know, the little right button, all the options that are there, their photo the blog photo, the picture of the recipe or the food isn't there. Do you know how to get around that or is that something on their yes. end that's a problem? Um, if you're just posting a link, you mean? Yeah, if I post a link and then it shows me all the photos that are an option with the link. But it won't let you change it. Sites that are like that. But it won't let you change it. Is that what you're saying? It it doesn't show me the blog post photo as an option. If there are photos on the right that are um, okay, are you always are you always opening the post up before you do that? What do you mean because by I, opening it up? Well, a lot of times you go to someone's site uh -huh. and the blog post will be first. But it's going to say, let's say you went to Laura's site and it said cakeduchess.com. Oh, yeah. No, I am. I'm doing the actual post and not the entire so website. Then it's, so it's got the, the name of the post after the website also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that I don't know. That might be the way theirs is set up. But if you want to get around that, all you have to do is click on one of their photos. And if uh -huh. they're downloadable, I mean, if you can open it and save it, open it and save it, post the photo with the link for their post under it. Okay, great. And that Thank way you. you're going to give them even more exposure because their picture is going to show much better. Okay. And you, and you can still say, I found this wonderful recipe or this wonderful idea for, for being more green in your kitchen. Uh, you know, go to this link or for eating, uh, you know, uh, certified um, grass-fed beef. <laughs> okay. Because I know right. that's what you do, right? Yes, that's uh, what I do. So, you know, if you post that, and then you put the photo in with that under it, uh, people are still going to go to that blog, so they're still going to get credit for you posting it. Mm -hmm. All right. So you know, that's a good thing. And you're also going to start getting credit for it too because it's not just a link because they're clicking on your G plus thing. All right. And while we're talking about that too, and I've mentioned it before, when you leave a comment for each other, if possible, if appropriate, leave their name in the comment. So if you saw something nice on a, on a site, like if you looked at Brooks's cake and you thought it was really great, you would put plus Brooks Walker, that cake is amazing. Okay, so you're saying his name on Google Plus. So what you're doing is a little bell is going off every time that happens and you're getting, you collect the, all those little dings every time and that is more exposure on the search engines for you because of that. So now, granted, you're not putting your name up, you're putting Brooks's name up. But when Brooks answers you, he's going to say, thank you, plus Chef Dennis Litley, I appreciate your support. Okay, so when we answer someone that puts our name in something, you know, we respond, it's reciprocal. So this is kind of like the comment game that we used to play on our blogs, where we'd leave 150 comments, we'd get 150 comments. Some, something like that, except this is actually going to benefit you in the search engines because the more your name is mentioned publicly, the more exposure on the SEO end of the search engines you're getting. Okay, so it's like it's it's a way for Google to reward their users. So the more I've been on, like I've been on G Plus now for a little over a year, and the more I've been on, the larger the number of my search engine hits gets because I'm getting bonus time for every time someone mentions my name, for every time I make a YouTube video, for every time I post. You know, it's, it's like this an accrual of bonus points for you for being a good pluser, for being a good user. All right, and again, that goes back to uh, <coughs> diversifying a little 
and not just having food bloggers because you're going to get a lot of praise and a lot and a lot of people that understand how the system works will also plus your name for you. I get more of those probably from other uh, other areas on G plus than I do from food bloggers. So Dennis, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so this is Stephanie. Hi everybody. I'm sorry I was late. Um, okay. So is that kind of like if you're replying to somebody on Twitter, you you say at Stacy Spensley. Yes. So this is plus. Okay, I, I had no idea exactly. that was the case. Um, but my question actually was, I'm really I was surprised to hear you say that we should be saving pe pictures off of other people's blogs and then posting them to. I I didn't say that. I didn't really recommend that. Robin was saying oh, that she okay. couldn't pick a picture, like when she went to some blogs and she wanted to repost it on G Plus. Right. That she could not access the photo that she wanted to give them credit. So I said, you know, perhaps, and if you clicked on the photo and saved it, you could post the photo there and uh, put their link under it. But I, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm not recommending that you go around and take people's photos uh, just to take them. Uh, she was asking how to get around. Some people have it set up where it just doesn't show. Like a lot of times when you post a link, you post the link and it gives you options of photographs you can use. And I see. Uh, this wasn't giving her the option. But no, okay. I, I don't uh, recommend just taking people's work. So you, I thought you meant for our own pictures that we should, instead of posting the link, oh, we no. should post the photo. <laughs> Someone else's picture? Yeah, for you, you should. Okay. All right. I, I am I recommending that for your blog. Now, okay. uh, post a picture from your post that is okay. what you feel is the most, uh, has the most impact. Okay. And what happens is, let's go back to screen share. Uh, let me go back to Google. Okay, here we got a great picture from Elizabeth. Looks nice. Let me let me go to food bloggers too. See where I'm at. This will be easier. And she's actually putting this link in. Now, see if you're doing this, you really don't need to leave this link in, and you can clean it up a little by taking the link out because when they click on this, this is taking you right to it anyway. So having the link with in this is a little redundant. Um, so, but are that. you suggesting that Elizabeth should have actually, instead of posting the link, should have put posted the photo with the link in the caption as she Correct. was doing it? Here you so go. that okay. See this? Okay. See the impact difference between that and that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Which one? I mean, for, first of all, I love I love Betty Ann. She's one of my friends. I would share this just because she's my friend, but if I don't really know her or have a relationship with her, I'm not going to share it. But this is outstanding. And not just because Laura's on here, but it's a really nice picture. I see texture. I see color. I, it's drool worthy. So if I share this, you know, I'm going to get more response to me off of her picture. And anyone that shares it from my post She's going to get the she's going to get the credit for it though. That's the one nice thing about Google. Like, say I share Laura's picture and I share it out to public. Yeah, this is just because, like I said, we're in this thing, so that pops up. I share it to public. Now, I'm going to get 30, 40 comments. I'm going to get 65, 70 plus ones on it. All right, but anybody that shares it, when you come back to her site. It's going to be right under here in her shares. All the shares come back to her. So everything leads, still leads back to her. Okay, so that's, that's a good thing about sharing too. You know, it's going to help you. It also helps them. It helps everybody involved here. But the difference with the impact, I, I mean, to me, this is just so much better than that. It's just small. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. It's a nice picture, but you can't really see it. Here, even though it's just a box of uh, eggnog, it's got more impact. Yeah, Dennis, there's another reason to use pictures, I learned. OK. Um, it has a, the image will show up better in searches. And then if you have uh, Google authorship, uh, let me go to a screen share and show you what happens with the, one of the pictures. The picture will show up next to the link. Uh, not only that. But uh, I don't know if you can see my screen now. No. No. Okay. Click on, well. click on screen share. 
I thought then, I did. And then click on the screen then, itself. So you have to open Screen Share. And then do. And then the little box pops up. Click on the screen you want to share. Right. And then click Share Selected Window. Okay. Did, um, are you seeing it now? No. Uh, now I see us. No. Okay. I'm doing something wrong. Okay. Anyway. That's all right. Uh, what I can see is the the uh, picture of the thing that I had written about and searched for, and then there's a picture of me followed by uh, several pictures that I have posted uh, because of the authorship that were not showing up before the authorship uh, took okay. effect. So uh, it really makes a big difference. Yes, Gareth. Yeah. Oh, you just made it. I'm sorry. That was it. I saw yeah. that on the side. That was it. I thought you had another one. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little slow reading the comments side. Um, okay. Well, that's good then. So that's another good reason to use the images. But like I said, it has so much more impact, and that is going to attract other people, uh, not just food bloggers. Then you're going to get your photographers making comments about it. You're going to get just your normal everyday people, your tech people. I had someone... She was doing a paper for her doctorate uh, in, in Maryland somewhere. She, uh, she was off. She took a day off from, I think it was John Hopkins, uh, to do something. And I posted something. Well, that stopped her work on the doctorate, she wrote. And she uh, had to make what I had posted and then posted about it to all of her friends. And they're telling her, aren't you supposed to be working on your project? You, know, you better get back to that. But she stopped. So a picture will have a lot more impact than you think it will. So that's, again, a good reason to post the, post the image. You know, it's food porn. Okay, and getting to that, too, while I'm saying that, is the use of hash, uh, the hashtags. All right, Google is really saying that we should start using hashtags. So I, that was something I've never used too much of, but I've, be, I've began to. And uh, the hashtags that you will find, I'm going to find a screen share. Okay. So here we've got GOA, molecular recipes, cocktails, and what you would do is put in your blurb, the link, and I guess Helene added those in because they didn't they didn't have any. Now here's one someone put in Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so, you know, a hashtag makes it more relevant in a search. So if someone is searching for food porn, if someone is searching for a dessert, if someone is searching for a cake, if someone is searching for a chicken dish, okay. And the nice things about hashtags is, is it'll start to give you some pre-made options. Um, I really don't know if I can say. Okay, so if I'm typing in food, it starts to give me foodies, food porn, food Friday, food quotes. So when you start it, it'll give you available cake decorating, cake experience. So it'll help, it'll walk you through it, and you're liable to get autumn autumn photography. You're liable to get more exposure that way from people who would never see you otherwise, just because they're coming up in here and they want to see autumn photography. I don't know if I have to put a hashtag in front of that or not for the search. There we go. So now because it was one of the hashtags, and I may never have found this person if it wasn't for that. So it's a good way to get yourself out there into mm -hmm. more people. Okay? So hashtags, they're recommending, you know, find something relevant. Um, I did my first, this is going to sound crazy, let me get back to my screen here. I did my first Catterday post this week. I keep seeing Catterday every Saturday. Catterday, Catterday. You know, I like cats, I'm really allergic to them, but oh God, people are just posting pictures of cats Saturday, it's insane. But everyone's doing it. Well, I posted of a picture of a cat licking a snow cone, a multicolored snow cone that I just happened to find on Pinterest and uh, with uh, and its tongue had the colors on it I think I got 400 shares 400 uh, plus ones 
and uh, I think about 70 shares off of it. And people who may never have found me found me because of <laughs> Catterday. Okay, so it, it's crazy. There's Foodie Friday, you know, and people that may not have found you that are, that look for Foodie Friday again. So if you can join something that's out there that may just seem a little crazy to you, you never know where you're going to pick up more readers, more followers, more of a diversified. Do they have a puppy day? Pupper day? <laughs> are you just asking? <laughs> I'm going to start it. Okay. Well, you know, I have two Bernese Mountain Dogs. I would love that. Um, so, I mean, the people on G Plus just love interaction. Okay, and that's what I'm trying to get across to everyone too, is that it's about interaction. It's about community, and it's not just about a community with us. It's about a community within, and uh, you're going to find some really neat people if you take a couple minutes to look for them and just to make a comment here or there. Uh, I had a guy in Iceland make the brown, my triple fudge brownies one time. Oh, he was the most excited I've ever seen anyone. And that and the fact that I attempted to give him um, metric conversions. You know, I do my best with them. I'm not real sure sometimes. But uh, he said they came out really well and posted a picture of it. So he was happy, and uh, he's a tech person. So every now and then I get something from him that he shares. So you know, you, you meet people, you make friends uh, that you would have never made because of it, and uh, it, it grows a community around you, and they tell their friends. And again, now here's more readership for you. you know, it's, it's how you uh, break into new segments. OK, any questions? Any topics you'd like to cover? Uh, yeah, Dennis, how do you, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> somebody shared a bun their cir a circle with me yesterday, mm -hmm. but how do, I, I know you have th tens of thousands of followers, and you explained a little bit to me last night how you got mm -hmm. so many followers, but is it just basically through um, the, the activities that you've been doing that you got so many followers, or are there tips for us that you can help us with? Well, the best tip I can give you is to, uh, to go into your stream and to find interesting people, make comments, leave pluses, and they're going to look and see that you left a comment and wonder who you are, and they're going to come back to you. And this is a, about diversifying, because you're really going to start to get a following when more people recognize you other than food bloggers. Right. And I, you know, I always repeat, we need each other. We, we want to stay intact. We want to keep in contact. But honestly, the people that are going to grow you are the people who are not food bloggers. All right. Um, when I share people, I'm not sharing what they do mostly for the other food bloggers I know, which it's good for them to pick them up if they don't have them. But I'm sharing it to my community at large so they get a chance for exposure with all the different people. Let me go back to my screen share here again. All right, now, go to my profile. Now, I had, I mean, I have an ungodly amount of followers now, but I had 13,000, and then Google put me on their interesting people to follow list because I was, I did so much here. I worked so hard at it. I was, they recognized me for two months and put me on that list, um, and that's what drove it up this high. So, I, I mean, I did pick up. So it shows, you know, if you do, if you really work at it, you can get rewarded, too. They do reward people. Now, here's a circle I shared yesterday with active food bloggers. And, and I know I may have missed some people, and I said, you know, if you know I missed someone, let me know uh, if you're not on here. But to add this to your circle, like if you want to add it to yours, all you do is you click on the Add Circle, uh, and that will give you the option of bringing them in. Okay, you can give it a new name and just add it right to everything you have. Or you can go through it and you can pick people out and you can add them that way also. Uh, you can go through the circle afterwards and if there's people that are doubles, you can take them out of one circle without losing them completely. If you have people in two circles and you uh, delete them from one circle, you're not deleting them completely. You're just deleting them from one circle. So. That's, that's that's good to good know. To know. Um, for here on your circles, when you open up your circles. Okay, you have them all here, and you can open up whichever one you want. And say I wanted to put Wendy into another circle. 
Well, I just take her and drag her right into that circle. And that's going to put her in two circles. So it's not going to eliminate her from this one. It's going to add her to an additional circle. So say you got this list from me and you said, hey, you know, I just want a circle of these certain people that I know so I can talk to them all the time or I can set up hangouts with them. So you could create a new circle and you can just start pulling people into that new circle. If you decide you don't want to keep it when it's done, then you would just go to uh, delete the circle and get rid of it because you don't need it anymore because you've put them where you want them to be within your circles. Okay? And, and I always say, you know, set up your circles in advance. I, I didn't right away, and I was just pulling everybody into two circles and a food blogger circle, and then I had to go back, and it takes time to start moving them around to check to see if they're still active and they're still doing things. Okay? Did that answer your question? Or tips? Uh, I mean, the, the biggest tip I can give you to, um, to get more followers is just to be more active. You know, it, it, you get back the time that you put in. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you know, you know you didn't get a lot of followers from just going on every few minutes, uh, uh, you know, a few minutes a day. It's work. It's retweeting. It's uh, interacting. It's being seen by other people. Uh, so it's the same thing here. It's a matter of time. And uh, what I tell people to do is if you don't have a lot of time to spare, at least try and give it 15 minutes a day, twice a day. The first 15 minutes you should spend going through your food blogger circle to connect with your friends, to plus one, to share. Uh, and, and again, by sharing their stuff, you're not just helping them. You're sharing their picture, and someone might see it that doesn't already have you in a circle and say, hey, that's a great piece of picture of a cake. They may not necessarily recognize that it's not yours, but they'll go back to you and see, oh, look, they blog about, or they have pictures of food too, so I'm going to follow them. So you're helping the person you share and you're helping yourself at the same time. So that first 15 minutes, spend it, or, you know, if you can give longer, oh, by all means, give longer. But if you're saying, I don't have time for a G plus, I really can't fit one more thing into my schedule. Well, you need to, especially this. So spend your first 15 minutes going through your friends. Spend the next 15 minutes you come on going through your stream. Okay? So go through your stream with all these people that you really don't know, that you really don't interact with, and start. Okay? Start interacting with some people that may have a lot more following. Right? They may just ignore you. They may not. You never know. Or if you've left them three comments, they may start talking to you even more. Okay, I've got some people that would follow me and drop me, follow me and drop me, follow me and drop me. And all of a sudden now, you know, it's like the third or fourth time is a charm. Now they stay with me. And you know, there's some pretty big people. So you have to prove yourself sometimes to them. Um, and, but that's a good way through interactions. So again, if we go back to the stream, am I on it? Home. So, I mean, I'll go back and forth because I honestly spend way too much time. Uh, I'll spend hours a day on this. Uh, well, look at that pizza. Isn't that nice? All right, but I'll go through my stream. And I have so many food bloggers now, and we are so prolific that a lot of them come up. But as more and more regular people show up, with pictures or something that I know. No, I'll be plus. I'll actually would be plus wanting a lot of these. They go. Frank is pretty funny. He he uh, posts a lot of different strange things. That's kind of neat. So I mean, go through it. Make friends. You know, if you see something you like, leave a comment and set yourself apart by leaving a comment with their name in it. Because now they're going to say, hey, let me go see at least who this person is. They just gave me a little push by, by putting my name in here. Michael's funny. I like him. Bren. Okay, so we see you know, Life Hacker. That's, a, that's a, um, a geeky kind of tech person. And they're probably not going to follow you back, but you know, someone in that's leaving them comments might see your comment too and wonder who you are. <sighs> Cat picture. <laughs> oh God! Some of the things on here just really make me laugh. Um, 
So that, that's worth it in itself. So go down your stream. Find some interesting things. Some times of the day are better than others. Some times of the day I, I just don't see anything and I'll go back to my food bloggers. And then I'll wait, you know, and I'll go back on later and look for something. Ooh, that's pretty. So, I, like I said, I spend way too much time doing this. But it's fun. I connect. Uh, I diversify. I share some strange things of food or some beautiful food with my circles. Uh, they love it and then they'll share it and then more of their people will come over. So again, it's, it's a matter of just getting yourself out there and working the system a little. Okay? Dennis, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay, so when you are getting folks come to your blog from Google+, Yes. Will that show up in your Google ref analytics? Okay, as being coming from Google. Google Plus. Google it will plus. show up plus. There's a couple different ways you're going to see it, and you'll see it as a referral. Look under your referrals mostly, because the 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 ones that just say Google are going to be your organic searches. Right. That's what I thought. I haven't been doing this right. I have. I always share things to circles when I do, which is really rarely. So I, I would, I'm sure I haven't seen much anyway, but I'll change that and do it to the public. Share. It, mm -hmm. And share more. <laughs> and and, and, and share, more. yeah, start with a photo. I mean, because okay. again, it's, it's the impact. It's what draws, it's like what draws anybody in, the visual. All right, we can't smell it, we can't taste it, but we can drool over the picture. So the impact of the picture is what's really going to get people coming to you. And, and honestly, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to see you know, tons of people following you from Google itself. But the side benefit to this is, is that your organic searches are going to go up. All right? Yep. Somebody was complaining that they weren't seeing anything uh, on analytics from people coming from G+. Well, I don't see anybody from Twitter coming to me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not using it right, I know that, but I still don't see people coming over. Facebook, I get some, I actually am getting more traffic since they changed things, and that's bizarre. But I also started posting pictures and a link instead of just the link, so that might be why. Uh, but you, you know, you're not going to see this great influx of people coming to you from G+, I won't lie to you and tell you that. Uh, I get more than I get from Facebook and Twitter combined, but with the amount that I'm getting from organic searches from G+, and that more from direct from my blog now, uh, I, you know, it, it's not anywhere near that, that number. You know, my number one source is uh, organic searches from Google. My number two source is my blog itself. And number three goes from Pinterest to, uh, I don't know what else. I forget what else. <laughs> Every now and then somebody will stumble something still or uh, you know, I'll get something from one of the, the food porn sites. But for the most part, they just really don't compete anymore. So the Dennis. side benefit is, the, 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 most, the biggest benefit of this whole thing is, is what you're going to do in your organic searches. That's where it's going to come from eventually. Yes? Dennis, I have a quick question. Mm-hmm. Um, is anybody else sitting in extremes? Like I, I run between food blogger and social media um, advisor and marketing. So I find that I, I have two extremes, and I don't know whether I'm, you know, putting out too much on one or too much on the other, and if that's going to compromise the people who follow me. I, I had a question about that from a food blogger yesterday, and she loves photography and she was going to start a separate page and I related a story that when I was in karate years ago and you know we, we watch TV so we think well I should learn this style and this style and this style and it'll make me that much stronger and my instructor equated it to a man who was digging holes and he says if you dig one hole you're going to reach your destination a lot quicker than if you start digging holes all over the field now how that relates to what you said was I would keep posting what you're posting if it's what you enjoy. Okay, so if you like what you post, I think you're just going to find your niche of people that way. And uh, besides just your food, your food blog, I'm sorry, your other one was social media? or what Yeah, I do a lot with social media and I do advising for small businesses. Okay. Well, I would keep that up there and just put that out, start using hashtags, 
and find out what social media, what hashtags are relevant to what you're doing, and people will find you that way. But you know, food bloggers need social media. So I mean, you're really relevant to us. And I know so very little about about it, you know, I'm just, I, I, I know how to work this, but I mean, Twitter or Facebook are still a mystery to me. I mean, I don't know why I have 3,300 followers on Twitter. Uh, I'm never on there. You know, uh, it just, I don't, I don't understand some things. Uh, so I, I would think that they would still tie in good, but you're going to draw these other people that are coming to you for social media to your food site. And I think vice versa, you might find someone who's a blogger who needs help or who has a small business and needs help too. So I think it's going to behoove you to keep doing what you're doing, how you're doing it, just to find a balance that makes you happy and that works for you. Like maybe one day you'll post social media, one day you post food. Um, the biggest thing I can tell you not to do is not to over promote yourself. Okay, it's like just like on Twitter, they tell you not to post more than twice the same thing. People come on here and I'll see them <laughs> posting the same thing over and over again or three and four times a day. Okay, they go into a little box that I, a little circle that I have that calls post too much. And that's off. <laughs> okay, every now and then I go in that and look to see if they're still posting too much. But when, when that happens, when I'll get in the period of two minutes, if I see eight or ten posts that are all about themselves, they go into that circle because that's you're really when you stop and think about it, you're spamming spamming people. So as long as you're not doing that with what you're posting, Trisha, I think you're fine. <laughs> what, Stephanie? Oh, Winnie's showing off her cat. <laughs> oh, I know. I see. Well, that's all right. The other night on a hangout, I had a guy doing that with his kid, and only the kid was going face right to the camera. So that's all I saw. <laughs> so, you never know. That's all right, Winnie. This is this is uh we're recording this, Winnie. Did you know that? <laughs> I can the... I can bring Daisy over. There you go. Uh, <coughs> now she left. No, she is. <laughs> no, sure. Um, the cat left. So, did that answer your question, Tricia? Or yes, it did. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it did. I think being a well-rounded person, if you're doing things that you enjoy. And keeping them in there just shows you more as a person, makes you more personable, and uh, helps your brand. I mean, if if you if a time comes when you want to just do social media and specialize, then maybe you break it off into a brand page. You know, but I you know I would wait for Google to fix that a little because I think it's really hard to have a brand page uh, right now. But you know, there's nothing wrong with putting that information in your profile. Do you have that in your profile too that you do all that? Yeah, everything is in the profile. Okay. Have so, links to your company and <laughs> yes, yeah. th there are links to the main company and then all the links to my food blog. Good. Yeah, because that, that's the only thing you just want to share the information. So if they are interested in that area of your life, you know they can connect with you. That's all. Okay. Any any other questions or? <laughs> so I I do have a question. Um, yes. Does this relate? Are there any ways that this relates to monetization for your brand, Dennis? You you did ask that. I'm glad you brought it back up. Um, on G Plus, no. Okay. If you're making a uh, YouTube video, I guess you get paid for those, don't you? If you, you set up, if you, if you set it up, turn yeah. it on, yeah. But okay, again, forty percent of my hits come from Google searches. There's my monetization. Okay, I'm getting rewarded for being a good pluser by Google by having more visibility in the um, in the search engine. So it, it's it is paying you in the long run. Okay, you just it's not you know like Twitter doesn't you can't monetize Twitter right or uh, Facebook I don't think you know you you can't so you can't think of it in those terms. But it's going to bring you much greater return eventually. You know, so you got to be patient. You got to give it some time. You know, it might be three months before you really see any real action come from it. it. You know, might not be that long, but it might be. It might be six months. But it's going to happen, and when it starts to happen, then it's going to start happening faster. So it, it's you know, it's, it's it's running the race you know the way it needs to be run and uh, and just remembering that eventually this is really going to pay off you know if you're spending an hour a day on facebook that's not going to get you anywhere in the search engines if you spend an hour a day on twitter 
that's not going to get you anywhere on the search engines. If you spend an hour a day on Google+, Plus, oh, that's going to get you somewhere. Okay, so here's where your return of investment is. All right, that's how you have to think of it. These days, uh, Facebook wants you to monetize them. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, you could see the writing on the wall. He wouldn't part with his stock for love nor money. Google Plus appears, and all of a sudden, he's gone public. And then the stock dropped, right? So <laughs> he's got more money. Uh, you know, but people with money know how to make more money. That's how it works. So um, I read something a few days ago, and and I asked the Google people about it, and they just kind of laugh when I ask them something that kind of hits home. Is that uh, Google is not looking to be the number one social media? That's not their goal. Their goal is to integrate themselves into every aspect of your life. <laughs> scary but true okay that's what they want to do it's just like what do we say now we're looking something up we don't look it up we google it okay they own us <laughs> but they're but they're benevolent masters okay they're giving us more so uh, with their google plus they're going to keep adding more and more things to it you know, they've told us they've told us that at meetings. There's more that we can do. Uh, we don't want to overwhelm you. We don't want to give you too much at one time, so that you it just becomes too much to do and you leave. You know, a lot of people have left already because of that. It was just they didn't understand it. They didn't understand how to use it, and they just you know abandoned ship, saying it's not working. You know, it's like anything else. It's not so much the product; it's how you use the product or you know, if you read the instructions on how to use the product. And where I see a lot of failings is people just don't set their profile up and all they do is come on and promote themselves and you're never gonna get any kind of following if that's all you do. So, you know. Dennis, did you mention about the, um, the cover photo thing that I figured out yesterday? Um, no, I did not. Uh, she, you're talking about putting in the top photo? Right. So um, those of you who are newer to Google Plus might notice on people who have been on it for a while that they have like five food pictures across the top of their profile. That's uh, now a legacy thing. So if you're changing or adding your profile now, you cannot do that, but you can create a cover photo um, that you can do it yourself and put Correct. it in, but you can't actually, what it is is it's using their scrapbook and um, that's no longer an option So because I tried to do it yesterday. Yeah, you can't do the five anymore. Uh, that's, right. that's gone. And yeah, I'm not doing that either. I have uh, one picture. Uh, I switched over, let me go to screen share. I think everybody should be familiar with this, but let's go to it. I mean, everybody knows how easy it is. Once you're on your home page to edit your profile, you just click Edit Profile. If you wanted to change the cover photo, you can put any of your blog photos up here. You can put any photo you want up here. Okay, it's just that simple to change a cover photo, and then you reposition it to what looks best for what you've got up here. So with a blog photo, sometimes it's a little difficult. And I saw it on my phone, and it looked completely, it actually looks better on my phone. It looks completely different, uh, this picture. And when you're done editing, I mean, you can get in anywhere from there, too. Uh, but that I change it, I don't know, every time I think of it and I have something that fits, I'll change this picture just to keep it interesting. So if you have something nice, if you're, if you're doing cakes or cookies or pies or something that you can get a nice image in this bar, you know, it's, it's good. You know, you're only going to attract more people. Change your profile photo if you have something else you want to rotate it with. Some people do that all the time. Uh, just keep it interesting, mix it up. Uh, the only thing with changing your profile is you don't want to confuse people because sometimes then they won't recognize you. So, Dennis, do you want to show them my profile just so they can see what I was talking about? Sure. Let me find you. Um, having trouble here. Here we go. Yeah, 
There you go. So what I did was I actually edited that on a black background to the specs of the size so that I could show case three pictures. But that's one image. I think there are sites that um, <laughs> extensions that will do that for you too now. I think I remembered seeing that somewhere. Uh, I'm just kind of, I kind of like the big picture now. I've gotten used to it. It took me a while, but now I kind of like it. So I, I, I use that. It's, it's like impact again. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that's personal preference. That's all. You know, that's why there's vanilla and chocolate and Lord knows how many other flavors. So do what feels right for you. Do what feels best for you and, you know, have fun. Because you got to have fun doing what you're doing. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> well, this was a great hangout. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Okay. Hashtags, authorship. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, back to screen share. I'm sorry. I'm reading the sidebars every now and then as I laugh. Um, select the window. Now I forgot what I was going to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Local. All right, this is another really good thing to do if you're not doing it. Again, bonus points from, Z from Google. Uh, Google owns Zagat. In every Google office, there is a community officer uh, or, or a Zagat representative. Okay? Good to know, good people to work with. Uh, nobody's really doing this, so they're, they're really happy when you do it. Okay, I, I tend to go in here and I'll leave maybe three or four at a time. I don't eat out that often, but I, I won't go in and just leave one. And if I did, it probably wouldn't be a good one because I'd be upset. So I go in there and do three or four at a time after I've eaten a few places. But you can look, it says search for restaurants, hotels, hairdressers, uh, car waxers, doctors, anybody that you provides a service that you want to leave a comment about, you can. And by going in here and doing this, I mean, you can rate people. You can open up a restaurant and give them a food rating, a decor rating, a service rating, and what the average cost is. Leave your comments about it. And then people will actually tag it that have come here. Because, you know, people that are traveling, now they're, they're getting used to looking for Google. And they'll see, um, you know, what people think of your reviews if they find it most useful. I don't think people have found that too useful. Okay. Oh, well. So anyway, that's another aspect of uh, G Plus to consider is the local button. Uh, you'll make some friends with the, the community managers, the Zagat managers, because they'll be happy that you're using it. While we're here, let's go to events. I'm going to make sure everyone knows how to schedule an event if by chance they want to do one. Okay, very simple to do an event. All right, and uh, here, speaking of the Zagat, here's a reviews day, and that started today. It's we, we've missed it, but it was at 9 a.m. and they went on to do different reviews for Zagat. Okay, so when you come in here to create an event, you click on the red box. Very simple. Event options is the first thing you want to do, so you don't forget if you want this to be on air. Click Advanced, make this an on-air event. Now what that means is all the people that haven't been able to get in today can watch this live as it's happening, streaming from my G Plus page. If I decide to put this on the sidebar of my blog, it's very easy to embed links, they tell me. I haven't done it yet, but you can embed the links. So there's a little YouTube box on the side of your blog page and anyone who happens to be there could watch it live while it's happening. Okay, So you can create an on-air event. You can come in here and change your themes to be whatever you want them to be. These are all the seasonal ones. You click on change themes and you can go on the featured, different ones that they'll have. They have some with motion in them. You can pick any of these out that are relevant. Stationary are pretty static. Or you can always upload your own photo. There's the cat. <laughs> you can upload your own photo of something that you want to put in here. Okay, so that's how you set this. Now you just put in your day, 
with your time. Pick your time. You can put an end time in if you want to. Location bar you'll fill in after you start your hangout. So once you set this up, just leave that blank for now. And uh, you can write your details in here of what you're going to do, what you expect, what you want. And then you come in here and then you just invite whoever you want to invite. And you make that an event. All right, so you set that up and you hit, in, you hit uh, invite and all your invitations will go out and your event set up. So then all you have to do when you're ready is come in to start a hangout, click on that. It's not going to let me because I'm already in one, but that's what will happen. All right? And then you'll set your hangout up. You'll type in the sidebar here. It'll ask you for a name for it. And then up in the very top, let's go back to this one. You'll see a start broadcast. Can everybody see the red button on mine? Is that on yours too? Should be at the very top of the screen. Well, if not, when you start a hangout, there is a start broadcast, a red button, and that'll make your YouTube video. So you don't have to make a video if you don't want one. Say you just want to hang out with Laura today and talk to her and talk about pies. You don't have to make that a hang uh, an event, or you don't have to make that live a broadcast YouTube video. You can just have a nice little chat with her, share a cup of coffee, and uh, catch up with a friend. So this is great for this too. You know, or you can have eighty of your friends on. You know, maybe you want to get your your uh, sorority sisters or your fraternity brothers or just people from uh, your family in another town together for dinner. This is one of the things I do. Chef hangout. Um, classes on cooking. I use this for that. And I'll set up two cameras when I do that. And I bring people on live and we cook together. Now I've had families come on. I had two in Amsterdam and two in Texas. So when you're done teaching them whatever you're teaching, you can leave and they stay on and they have a meal together. So this is a great way to bring people from all over the country together just like we're doing today uh, for any other purpose. Say you want to talk to your friends that are anywhere else and you want to have a drink with them or you want to share a new cocktail recipe or you want to share a new pie recipe or whatever you want to share with them. This is a great thing you can use to do that too. Okay, so that's getting a little off topic, but talking about hangouts and how to do the events. All right, any questions? We good? Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you all for coming today. I'm going to go yeah. watch the storm for a while. <laughs> And uh, if you have any questions, please email me, send me a message on uh, Google+. You know, don't be afraid to do that. It's easy to use. Just uh, take everything out of the box and put my name in. Just make sure you're not, if you're asking something you don't want anybody else to see, don't make it public accidentally and put my name in. Just make sure whoever you're sending the message to is just addressed to them and no one else will see it. And uh, you can ask me anything you like. And if I can help you, I'll be very happy to help you. I would ask you to contact any other food bloggers that you may know and try and motivate them a little to come on to Google+. Because we really want to build this community. And we're, we're looking right now. Laura's going to help me. And we're going to start building this community up some and seeing where we can take it and seeing what we can do. Because I'd really like to have a a festival that I could go to that would be a lot of fun since Food Buzz died this year. May they rest in peace. Uh, anyway, <laughs> or in pieces as it is with Federated. Okay. Um, but just, you know, we, we could really do something with this, I think, and make this into a lot more than it is and uh, really be very popular among the community. I have a slogan for us, too. Our food bloggers' slogan is now. Oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Well, oh, that was this anticlimactic. All right, let's try this again. My food blogger's slogan is come for the food, stay for the conversation. Okay, because you'll come to Google Plus to share your food and to show your food. But once you take some time to diversify, you're going to stay for the conversation because you're going to meet a lot of really neat people on G Plus. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you all later. Thank you, sir. Bye, Thank You're you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.